Welcome to this video mini lesson introduction to Spearman's rank order correlation, or also known as Spearman's row, which is an example of a non-parametric non statistical procedure. And I'll explain what I mean by that in just a minute. But first, let's revisit the assumptions for Pearson's R correlation procedure. There are six different assumptions, as we talked about in the last video mini lesson, one of which is that the data um, for both variables is normally distributed. And another is that the data, the variable data, is interval level data. Well, if you have a violation of any of these assumptions, you cannot use Pearson's R. But if you have a violation in normal distribution and interval level data assumptions, you can actually use Spearman's row. So in other words, if you have data that is not normally distributed, that is skewed in one way or another, you can use Spearman's row. Also, if you have data that's not interval data, if, you, if that data is ordinal, you can use Spearman's row. Now remember, if you have categorical data that you can rank order, that is known as ordinal data as opposed to nominal data. So Spearman's row will work with ordinal categorical data, but not nominal data. So if you have either of these violations of assumptions, instead of using Pearson's R, you can simply use Spearman's row. Here is the formula for Spearman's row, and you'll notice a couple of things about it. One is we have a constant in this formula, and this is the first time we've seen a constant in any of our formulas for statistical procedures. Also, you have this term d squared. What does that mean? That actually refers to the difference in your rankings. So let's say that you have six cases or um, six subjects in your study. You rank those subjects according to or long variable one. Then those rankings for variable two are paired for each of the cases. Then the difference is simply the difference in rankings between each one. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 2 minus 1 is 1, etc., etc. And then you square these differences in order to you find the sum of all of them for this formula for Spearman's row. So here I have all of my squares of my differences between the rankings of these variables. And then I can put sum up all of my squared differences and that is what this term refers to in the formula. And then obviously in the denominator you have the sample size, which is the number of cases or number of paired values you have. Multiply that times n squared minus 1, subtract this whole thing from the, from the number 1, and you have your Spearman's row. A couple of things to keep in mind with Spearman's row, like with Pearson's R, the values range from negative 1 to 1, where negative 1 is a perfect inverse correlation and positive 1 is a perfect positive correlation. You can do the hypothesis test with Spearman's row just as you can, can with Pearson's R. You cannot, however, use R squared to calculate the effect size for Spearman's row, and that's because this is non-parametric, because you don't have necessarily interval data, so it doesn't make sense to use R squared. And also, like with... Pearson's R, you have to use a special lookup table in order to find the critical values. So then you would uh, compare the critical value to your actual uh, Spearman's row value in order to determine whether or not this value is statistically significant. You have to do something very analogous to that with Pearson's R, but you're actually using a different lookup table. So even though you will not find a, a Spearman's Row lookup table in your Abbott book, you can just Google Spearman's Row table and various examples of them will pop up. And, and, and all of the the data values will be the same in both of them, which just sort of has to do with how they're um, aesthetically arranged. I like this one because it gives you a column for two-tailed test and one-tailed test. Also, it's important to note that you have to actually use a variation of the Spearman's row formula for tied ranks. So if I have this sort of situation where I have my uh, five cases here and the rankings on variable one, I might have some tied rankings in variable two. And if that's the case, I have to take the average of these uh, for those particular cases. 
So just keep in mind that if you do have tied ranks, which tends to happen in big samples of ranked data, then you actually have to use a variation of Spearman's row. So hopefully uh, this will all sink in, but if you have any questions, as always, please let me know. Thank you.